Welcome to Tech Tales. I'm Corbin Davenport. I'm Jacob Westall. And today we're talking about Flappy Bird. Do you remember do you remember Flappy Bird, Jake? Oh god, do I. I remember I was in college at the time when it dropped and I was hanging out with like the music people, the lovely music folks in their lounge and it was it was one of those games where it was just I didn't find it interesting but everyone else was so enamored in it and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> you you were almost annoyed because like you didn't get it. I didn't get it and I never got to talk to anyone because I'd be like, I'd get out of an engineering class and I'd be like, hey, tap, 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 tap. hey, <laughs> just everyone's ignores me for the game. Yeah, I was, I think I was in high school. It was one of the first mobile games or apps that I remember really captivated everyone for like a couple weeks mm -hmm. and then and then it just dropped well what i remember is that when it slowly disappeared i think it got taken down off the app store yes. by the creator and i remember people were trying to sell their phones before they had uninstalled it yeah like they would sell it at a ridiculously jacked up price yeah we'll get to that there's there's some good oh, stuff yeah there. yeah so before talking about flappy bird we got to talk a little bit about the guy who made flappy bird his name is Dong Nguyen. He grew up mm -hmm. in a village outside of Hanoi, Vietnam. Nguyen really loved Nintendo games growing up. He mentioned in an interview after Flappy Bird happened that he had, I believe it was like a Game Boy clone that he got when he was young and he was able to play some games on that. Eventually he became a programmer and he attended the Hanoi University of Science and Technology from 2004 to 2009 and he received an engineer's degree in computer programming and pretty soon after that he got an internship at a company called punch entertainment and they mostly made early mobile games so even yeah. even like pre-smartphone all those lovely java me games nguyen starts working on flappy bird in april of 2013 and do you do you remember roughly how Flappy Bird worked? I yeah, it was like you had this bird that kept falling and you had to tap it to make it fly up and you kind of had to dodge like the Mario tunnels or whatever it was. Yeah, it was just a it was just a 2D game and this bird was flying and he would start to plummet to the ground unless you tap the screen and that gave him a little a little jump and you had to keep tapping to get him through there was like pipes on the bottom of the screen and pipes on the top and you just had to get him through the pipes and inevitably he would hit one of the pipes and what yeah. what your your score at the end would be however many levels of, of pipes you got through. Yeah. Nguyen mentioned in interviews that the bird mechanic was based around the gravity of paddle ball, which like, <laughs> like makes a lot of sense when you look at it and I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. And also the bird, which I didn't know. Did you know the bird had a name? The bird's name is Fabby. Fabby. Oh, wait, that kind of rings a bell. <laughs> it's all this flappy bird lore. And uh, Fabby was modeled after the cheap, cheap fish from Mario games. Because, again, he really yeah. liked Nintendo growing up. And that becomes a point of contention later. But I, I will say it only it looks a little bit like the fish, but... I mean, it's still pretty different. It's a bird. Yeah. So finally, Flappy Bird was released on the Apple App Store on May 24th of 2013. And notably, it was iPhone exclusive at first. It, it wasn't on Android yet or any other platforms. We still had uh, we still had Windows Phone at that point. Didn't come to Windows Phone. That's probably why it failed. <laughs> yeah, that's why it failed. No Flappy Bird. Pass. <laughs> So the interesting thing is that Nguyen releases this and he basically does no advertising for this at all. Like he just releases it into the world and he does a couple tweets on his account and that's it. There wasn't a lot of people using it for a long time. Yeah. It just kind of sat there. Really nothing much happens with it until December of that year in 2013. And that's when it really starts to slowly rank up the charts on the app store Nguyen still doesn't really know what caused this uh i don't know what caused it 
trying to figure out how something goes viral is really difficult. A good example of this happening actually re- more recently is the game Among Us which yeah. was released and then for years like people played it it, it was you know it, it had a player base yeah but it was pretty it never got that high and the game was actually going to be discontinued by the time it suddenly became super popular and of course now it's being updated and yeah i think the, um, all that chess they had planned to make an among us too but then once yeah. among us got really popular like well no we'll just roll in what we had planned for that into the current game so Flappy Bird reaches the top 10 of the uh, United States App Store charts by early January 2014. Yeah. And by January 17th, it reaches number one. Also around this time is when he releases an Android version of the game. And by the end of the month, it's number one on the Google Play Store. So the game is starting to take off. But Nguyen is actually getting frustrated around this time because the game is subject to a ton of criticism as it's becoming more popular. So I'm going to send you a snippet of a Rolling Stone article by David Kushner from March 2014 that kind of explains what happens to Nguyen at this point. Okay. A news hit of how much money Nguyen was making. His face appeared in the Vietnamese papers and on TV which was how his mom and dad first learned their son had made the game. The local paparazzi soon besieged his parents' house, and he couldn't go out unnoticed. While this might seem a small price to pay for such fame and fortune, for Nguyen, the attention felt suffocating. It was something I never want, he tweeted. Please give me peace. But the hardest thing of all, he says, was something else entirely. He hands me his iPhone so that I can scroll through some messages he saved. One is from a woman chastising him for distracting the children of the world. Another laments that 13 kids at my school broke their phones because of your game, and they still play it because it's addicting like crack. Nguyen tells me of emails from workers who have lost their jobs, a mother who had stopped talking to her kids. At first, I thought they were just joking, he says, but I realized they really hurt themselves. Nguyen, who says he botched tests in high school because he was playing too much Counter-Strike, genuinely took them to heart. At the same time, he said on Twitter that he was receiving hundreds of death threats each day, which is way out of proportion Yeah, for making it. I mean, just one is probably too many if all you've done is make a video game. Yeah. About just a bird that you tap to make fly. Not even something grossly offensive. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Won't go into it. Yeah. I think it's kind of hard to draw the line about which of these are just jokes. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely for a while, Flappy Bird, like, just the fact that it was difficult and the fact that it made people frustrated was like a meme. Like, it was just funny. Like, it was, this game makes me sad. Yeah, it was, like, kind of the first bit of video game memeing, but it just didn't happen on the internet. It was much, yeah. It was mostly word of mouth, like, hey, dude, there's this game that's really hard. Like, see if you can get a better score than me. Oh, of course I can. You know, that's how it... I feel like that's how it really got it spread, was just the word of mouth. I think it might be, like, the perfect mobile game, because <laughs> yeah. it had one button... And it was just something you could play while you're waiting for food or something. Yeah. And also it plugged into Twitter and I think Facebook. And you could share your high scores with other people. So there was a competitive element. Yeah. But definitely at least some of these reviews were just people joking. Oh, gotta be. Okay, so I've got a couple of reviews I'm going to read that I found and thought were funny. And I'm pretty sure all these are jokes. They're too funny not to be. <laughs> so Martin Suarez on the Play Store wrote, quote, This game ruined my life. I lost my house, wife, kids, job, truck, and dog because of this game. It consumed my soul and life. I can't sleep at night because I can't get past seven, and it haunts me throughout the day. All I can hear is flapping, and it is driving me insane. I have been <laughs> admitted to an insane asylum and will start my road to recovery soon. Quote. <laughs> oh i love those 
Another iOS review said, quote, My family called an exorcist to try to remove this devil game, but Flappy Bird had already firmly gripped my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Louis Jimen- Jimenez on the Play Store wrote, quote, Don't download this game. It will take over your life. It's the devil's game. I lost my job. I had a car crash. I also ran my daughter over and my wife left me. I wish I could go back and never install it. I'm being honest. Don't play this game. <laughs> I'm going to hope that one's a joke. Oh, Sounds like a be. joke. It's got to be. My favorite one was left by someone who goes by Pixel Forest on the Google Play Store. And this one was actually written in 2019. So this is way after all this happens. They go wow. back and leave a review. Um, because I, I believe the Play Store listing has been reinstated, so you can technically download this again. But they wrote, quote, Kind of sad. After five soul-sucking years, I finally reached 999 pipes. Mario killed me. All the wasted time. I could have been donating blood or saving a street puppy, but instead I was unconsciously driving a virtual chicken nugget to its impending and ultimate doom. Three out of five, Flavor Town. <laughs> does it does it actually have a Mario kill you at the end? <laughs> is that, or is that part of the meme? Yeah, I, I think that's one of those things like um like Hero Brine in Minecraft where people just made it up because it's funny. Yeah. Also, in kind of a similar vein, there's a parody news site called Huzzlers.com. And around this time, they publish an article about a teen who was arrested for killing his brother after he achieved a higher score in Flappy Bird than him. Ooh. But that's, that again, that's a, that's a fake story. They're like the yeah. onion. Uh, yeah. But some people don't get the joke and they start spreading it. So, like, a, there are a couple of reviews Every once in a while, you'll find where someone's like, someone killed over this game. Don't install it. It's like, no, that didn't happen. Yeah. Don't eat the onion, folks. The immense popularity of this game obviously means that there's going to be clones. But there were yeah. a lot of Flappy Bird clones. Like, I don't think anyone realized just how many there were. Oh, yeah. Especially because the game is so popular and it's so simple. So really, you can make a clone in not very much time at all. And also the fact that it wasn't on Android until it had already hit number one on the Apple App Store. That mm-hmm. created a vacuum. Yeah. So besides just the pile of garbage clones that weren't very good and were loaded with ads and everything else, there were a couple fun ones. So Sesame Street published a Flash game on their website called Flappy Bert, which replaced the bird with Bert from Sesame Street. And uh, when Bert hit a pipe, he would yell, Ernie! <laughs> that's that's fun. Yeah. Ernie. Um, also, the band Fallout Boy released a game called Fallout Bird where you played as one of the four band members while avoiding guitars. Like, instead of a bird, there was just their faces. <laughs> and you went up and down. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. At a certain point, Apple and Google both began rejecting games with the word Flappy in the title. <laughs> like, they were just like, okay, no, you can't, you can't keep You're doing this. You're an obvious clone. Many... Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We already have 700 of you. Go away. One of the more interesting articles I read about Flappy Bird clones was about a developer from the Czech Republic who released a clone called Flappy Crocodile. Oh, jeez. And that game itself, like, it's just it's just Flappy Bird but with a crocodile instead. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. But the article was talking about how he uploaded the code to this website that was popular as a, like, coding template platform. So what happened was is that he uploaded it to this template website. So if anyone else wanted to make a Flappy Bird clone, they could just buy his code and start from there. In a pretty short amount of time, over 100 developers bought the code. Oh, my God. Just just for that (laughs) one clone, which then spawned a bunch of other games based on that. So just to give you an idea of like the scale of this, one of the clones... The code was purchased over a hundred times within a few months. I mean, if you're getting, if you're topping 
both Android and iOS app stores, it your stuff's going to get ripped off. IP protection laws don't matter at this point. It's getting ripped off. Perhaps the clone with the largest install base was actually Android 5.0 Lollipop. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Google, for a while, had been hiding Easter eggs in Android when you tapped on, I believe it was like the build number in the um, settings, something like that. It wasn't that. build number. It's the actual Android version number. Yeah, yeah, the Android version. Yeah, so every version around this time when you would do that, it would do like a different animation or something. Mm-hmm. And Android 5.0 Lollipop, which was released in October of 2014, so like the year, the the update preceding all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Easter egg was just Flappy Bird. It was the little Android that flew up and down, and the pipes were lollipops. I do remember that, yeah. Going back to the criticism with Flappy Bird, that really starts to reach a high point in like late January, early February about of 2014. On February 6th of 2014, Kotaku publishes an article written by Jason Schrader, and the title of the article is Flappy Bird is making $50,000 a day off ripped art. This is a weird article. It's not very long, and it tries to point to similarities between Flappy Bird's art and art from Nintendo's Mario series. And it seems like unnecessarily harsh. It tries to make the case that this is just yet another low effort mobile game ripping off nintendo's aesthetic Mm -hmm. and there's two images included in this article and i'm going to send you the first one so this is a comparison between the pipe in flappy bird and the pipe in i believe that's super mario world on the snes i think that's what it was yeah i mean it does look a lot alike but again a pipe is a pipe. It's not like... Yeah, there, there, there's only so many ways you can draw a pixelated green pipe. Yeah. And it's very clearly not stolen. Yeah. The shadowing is different. And yeah. Y- yeah. It's like the one in Flappy Bird's wider. But that's one of the images. Yeah. So anyway, like this article is, is just, it's just weird. Yeah. I don't think something like this would be written today just because... It's so well established that Nintendo is a copyright troll, if nothing else. Yeah. And they very much like taking down Let's Plays of people playing their own games. Mm -hmm. Uh, They love to shut down competitive games of Smash Bros and all this other stuff. That's And so it's very weird to go back and read this article where Jason Schrader is sort of being offended on behalf of Nintendo. It's like, eh. Does Nintendo need anyone's help? No. I don't think so. They're good. They they pay people for this, man. I, I had this written down for later, but throughout this whole process, Nguyen never gets any legal threats from Nintendo. That never happens. Yeah. Even though that's like a rumor that kept popping up throughout this whole thing, that's why a couple people speculated he took down the game later because Nintendo was pitching a fit, which would be in character for a Nintendo of today. Yeah. But... Back then, you know, Nintendo even confirmed, like, no, we didn't send him anything. He's fine. Because, again, like, it's not it's not a ripoff. It doesn't use any Nintendo assets. It doesn't have Mario in the name. It's fine. And that article ended with this line that says, Let this be a life lesson. If you want to make $50,000 a day, put ripped art in a terrible game. It's very upset. He's just mad he didn't think of it first. Clearly. It does come off that way. That $50,000 a day number is a little bit weird. That originally came from a Verge article, which was just a short interview with Nguyen. And that was like the main new piece of information in that article Mm -hmm. was Nguyen stated that he was making roughly $50,000 a day from the ads in Flappy Bird. But a later Forbes article where they also talked to Nguyen called that an estimate. And Nguyen says he didn't actually know the real amount of daily revenue so kind of fuzzy on the numbers yeah it is kind of difficult to know like exactly per day 
especially when you have something that's like surging in popularity and usually these payments are like per month or something. Yeah. He said he didn't know the exact number he was making at its peak and that sounds totally reasonable to me. Yeah, definitely. So that specific article kind of causes a whole mess. A lot of people rightfully, I think, call out Kotaku for just being really unfair and kind of aggressive. Yeah. So two days later, the article gets updated and it has this extra part put in. Quote, given that the word ripped can be interpreted as lifted, I've decided to change the headline for the sake of clarity. Before scrutinizing the two pipes side by side, I believe that Flappy Bird's art was directly taken from Mario... However, when examined, it's clear Flappy Bird's pipe is a new, albeit unoriginal, drawing. The similarities are apparent, as I originally noted, but ripped may have been too harsh a word. He got proven wrong and is trying to backpedal without admitting he was wrong. Yeah. Like he said, he believed Flappy Bird's art was taken directly from Mario, but he made the comparison image in his article where the two pipes don't, they don't look the same. No. Like, they're very clearly a little bit different. Like, they're still green pipes, but... One's olive green, one's lime green. Yeah. It's they're... different shades. You could tell they've drawn it so that the light is hitting it at a different angle. Like Yeah. Like, I'm sure Nguyen was looking at a screenshot of a pipe in Mario when he drew this. But Yeah. But the link to the article and... All the other sources are in the show notes. So you can go decide for yourself if you think Flappy Bird uh, stole assets from Mario games, but uh, it didn't. So finally, on February 8th of 2014, Nguyen removes Flappy Bird from the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. He told Forbes in an interview, he said, quote, Flappy Bird was designed to play in a few minutes when you are relaxed but it happened to become an addictive product. I think it has become a problem. To solve that problem, it's best to take down Flappy Bird. It's gone forever. Quote. So he removes it because he feels it's it's causing more harm than good. And obviously from the bit you read earlier, like he's getting way too much abuse online and in real life over this. Yeah. Also, Kotaku's editor-in-chief later apologized for the site's coverage of Flappy Bird because that whole article, I think, probably was one of the deciding factors that made yeah. Nguyen take this game because that really charged everyone who was paying attention to this. And, like, even when I was scrolling through reviews to find those really funny ones earlier, like, there were a couple that basically were, like, an echo of the article's main yeah. points. You could tell they read it and then just went to the store and left a one-star yeah this guy just wanted to do something fun he wanted to make something fun that you could play in your own free time you know yeah he didn't have control over people who would just waste their life away and like miss opportunities and tests and all that and yet he's the one who gets flack for it and it's just leave him alone <laughs> yeah like i think with some stuff you can make the argument that it's more harmful than good like mm -hmm. i think we've we've all come to that conclusion with like cigarettes yeah but this is this is just a mobile game that it, it just taps into that part of your brain that's like i want to get the high number and that's mm -hmm. it that's that's the most it's doing so i will send you a snippet from kotaku's editor-in-chief in a long article they published after the game was removed okay much has been made about that article we read last Thursday, which originally was headlined, Flappy Bird is making $50,000 a day off ripped art. The word ripped was too strong, and the article's author has come to regret it. I do, too, and wished I'd caught it. The headline's been changed since then. I wish that partially because I disagree with the opinion of the piece. I see Flappy Bird as being inspired by Mario art. I think it's as fair as inspiration as many inspirations we've seen of classic Nintendo art in games from 3D dot game heroes to Gua Guacamelee. Guacamelee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 3D dot game heroes to Guacamelee to Parade. There's room for debate there, but that's where I stand. More so, I regret not catching an article that didn't make what I'd consider to be a clear or fair argument. 
Why would a game have to be original? Why couldn't it remix existing styles of graphics and play? Our writer failed to wrestle with that, and so we failed our readers and Don Nguyen with that piece. Our writers didn't have to agree with my opinions, but we all need to have an ample nuance in our takes, and I need to ensure that something like this doesn't slip through again. Kotaku's editor is very clearly like, that should not have gone up. (laughs) That was bad. But, of course, Flappy Bird's story did not end with it being removed from the store. In most cases, and in the case of Flappy Bird, it stays installed on devices that downloaded it before it got taken down. So anyone who was playing Flappy Bird, and I I guess anyone who was addicted to it, like, is still addicted to it, but it stays installed on people's phones who already had it downloaded. So there is a frenzy on eBay for phones, like used iPhones, that have the game installed. Notably, this is never an issue with Android devices, because on Android you can just extract the application file from a phone yeah and then just side load it side load it on whatever you want so you can still download the flappy bird apk today and play it on your android device it'll give you a warning that like it was built for an older version of android but it still works yeah side loading on iphone is a little bit harder especially at this time unless you wanted to jailbreak even then that's ridiculously hard yeah So a bunch of iPhones with Flappy Bird still installed started to show up on eBay. Most of them were between $300, which was like just the price of a used iPhone, to roughly $5,000. It's hard to get numbers on the phones that actually sold because like I can I can list uh, old banana on eBay for $10,000. It doesn't mean anyone's going to buy it, but I can list it. Yeah, yeah. One of the examples of this that got a lot of press attention was a listing for an iPhone 5S with Flappy Bird installed from a seller named Pinterest, which went as high as $99,900. However, eBay removed the listing six days before the auction closed. The Los Angeles Time got in touch with the seller and they said, quote, eBay took it down. They said you can't sell phones with apps which doesn't make sense to me because every iPhone has apps and they sell millions of them on eBay. Yeah, kind of got a point there. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how many of these phones actually sold. I try doing, you know, when you go on eBay, you can search for a thing and then click the little box that says sold items to get an idea. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't seem to go back as far in history as when this was happening, so there's not a lot of clear data. I remember vaguely, I actually had a friend who had said he was going to sell his but then got oddly quiet about it about a week later so i'm thinking he'd put it up and then it just didn't sell yeah possibly yeah (laughs) because he never changed phones so so even though flappy bird remained unavailable for people who wanted to download again except android people it did come back from the dead a couple times So, Nguyen actually published a two-player version on the Amazon Fire TV in August of 2014, and this was called Flappy Bird's Family. Basically, it was just Flappy Bird, but in was in landscape, because the Fire TV is a TV. Yeah. And I believe you could have, like, two birds going at once for multiplayer, so you could see who would get the high score. I couldn't find any information about whether or not like Amazon paid for this because it, that that would be the smart thing to do is if oh, yeah. Amazon saw it jumping in popularity and then contacted the devs like, hey, you want to make a better version for our TV thing? And that version is still available. So if you have a Fire TV, I, I think you can download that. Also in 2015, a Wisconsin-based company called Baytech released a officially licensed Flappy Bird arcade game, which I I think I remember seeing this a couple years ago in, like, Chuck E. Cheese or, like, those kinds of places. Yeah. So I've got a video of the arcade game. Okay. Loaded over 50 million times and celebrating being the number one free downloaded game in 53 countries, the Flappy Bird app 
is now life size. Flappy Bird is sure to draw attention with the larger than life screen and a gameplay that will have players coming back for more. Players insert credits and let the challenge begin. Simply press the large red button to skillfully maneuver the bird through the openings in the pipes as the screen continuously moves to the right. Having the bird touch one of the pipes or the ground ends the player's game. Earn tickets with every set of pipes that the bird successfully passes through. Players compete for the daily high score or the all-time high score and brag as their Flappy Bird changes as these levels are accomplished. This skillful game stands 37 inches wide, 40 inches deep and 91 inches high, fitting through any standard doorway. Players and bystanders alike will have fun watching the clear gameplay on the 42-inch LCD monitor. It's just a larger version of the phone game, basically. And yeah. the, the only control is like a giant red button. It's the perfect arcade game, though. So, really, that's the end of Flappy Bird, for the most part. Like, again, you can still download it in places today, but... That was really the last time they, uh, something new Flappy Bird related was released. Nguyen moved on to other projects. In August of 2014, he released Swing Copters. Do you remember that one? No. Okay. It's it's kind of the same basic mechanic as Flappy Bird. Yeah. But you, you've got like a little helicopter and it goes vertical instead of horizontal. Hmm. Huh. And the obstacles are on the sides of the screen. And there's like little swinging hammers that you can... It's basically a harder version of Flappy Bird. Hmm. So maybe if if he was hoping to... Recapitalize. Yeah, I, this this maybe wasn't the right move if he was concerned about like people getting frustrated at a game he made. Because it was harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe if I make it harder, they'll leave me the hell alone. Yeah, I, that might have been part of it. Like if you were just like, I'm going to make this game so difficult they will they will uninstall it after a couple yeah. games. So, I don't know, maybe that was part of it. Um and there w that did get a sequel in 2015, uh, Swing Copters 2. And he's he's made a couple other games um in the past years. You know, he's still pretty private, which I I probably would be if I had to go through all this garbage. Oh yeah. So, he doesn't talk on Twitter and, and social media very much. But according to his LinkedIn, he's still doing his own game development. So he's still living the dream of independent software development. Oh uh, yeah. And uh I, I hope he's I hope he's happy. I hope he's not getting bullied on the internet anymore. Yeah. The story, it's not the exact same, but it kinda of reminds me of the whole no man's sky thing. Where like so an independent game developer says, Hey, we're gonna release this ridiculously awesome game. And then Sony picks it up and they make the head of software, not a PR person, the head of software do the press tour. And so not being a people person, he just like says a bunch of shit he's not supposed to, you know, overhypes it, oversells it. And then when it comes out, it just like doesn't meet any expectations. And so the developers just kind of fall off the radar and like it's still getting patches and updates and it's actually really good now. I could see Nguyen kind of doing the same thing of like, I don't want the spotlight. I just want to make a good game. Yeah. From what I've read of him talking, like he does seem like that kind of person. Like I just, you know, I like games. I would like to make some sometimes that'd be cool. Yeah. It's kind of a, one of those hobby things that it's just happens to be a hobby. That's easily, you can easily make a living off of if you devote enough time to it. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's really it. And hopefully one day he'll may maybe make another game with a, to quote that l earlier review, a virtual chicken nugget. <laughs> we want to see him return. Flappy Bird will return in Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers 5 and Flappy. <laughs> <laughs>